Uh, once again, Dimitri already introduced me. I came from, I'm coming from Lloyd's Register Foundation Center for Safety and Reliability Engineering in Aberdeen in Scotland. So it's geographically and politically still just in Europe. Uh, okay, w w where I'm coming from, or in other words, uh, what is the motivation and challenges in, of the study? Oh, perhaps I should really return to the uh, title. Uh, what I'm going to present is an, uh, a framework, or really an initial sketch, perhaps of a framework rather than theory, of uh, optimization of structural health monitoring sensing system topology, in other words, uh, s uh, sensor location, mostly for maximizing the value of information from such, uh, such schemes. And the motivation is as follows. Of course, the topic of uh, optimal sensor location is not new. There has been a lot of... Uh, Frameworks proposed over a couple of decades now, and mostly related to, or, or starting from some information theoretic uh, approaches, mostly related to measurements of dynamic signals, so very suitable for, say, or, or related to strong to vibration-based uh, uh, damage detection method. They basically amount to placing sensors in such, place, in such a place or places where you will not lose too much uh, vibrations for, from the modes of interest or frequency range of interest and, and uh, so on and so forth. So that's, that's, uh, that's okay. Those are useful approaches and depends what you want to, uh, to really achieve from your um, measurements. But first of all, uh, what about other types of sensors, right? SHM is not only about vibration-based. There are other types of measurements, not necessarily leading to any, any context of model analysis and so on and so forth. Uh, so that, that, that's one challenge or, or one motivation for, for what I'm trying to achieve. And second one is really, is this information or, or optimization of sensor location really kind of spot on in terms of what you want to achieve in terms of damage detection, right? Is it really, really, are you able to, to, to uh, reliably link, say, information from, uh, from, uh, from vibration-based method to something which is, uh, which is uh, related to, to, uh, to damage as such? So our objective is to formulate an initial really outline of a framework for optimal sensor placement, which would assess the structural condition or manage risk of structural failure based on minimizing the failure risk against the cost of data collection. In other words, maximizing really the value of information from uh, what, we, what we measure. Uh, so, okay, so in damage detection, we want to, in SHM, um, Excluding perhaps applications where you want to assess performance, but kind of uh, core, quite often activity is try to detect damage. So we really need to look a little bit uh, in terms of how we really conceptualize, conceptualize damage in, uh, in uh, structural engineering. Right? There is reliability of uh, structural failure theory, which assumes basically that reliability of a structural system is a, f a function of reliability of individual members. Failure occurs when a mechanism is formed, perhaps plastic, perhaps brittle mechanism, due to local failures of one or more structural members of cross sections. Due to buckling of the member, for example, plastic hinge formation, cracking, uh, uh, fatigue crack, which leads to, 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 to catastrophic consequences, uh, and so on and so forth. And this is illustrated here on the simple example of, uh, of a rigid frame with, uh, with hinges. Right? There are typically several probable modes how this structure can fail. It can fail in infinite number of, uh, of uh, uh, modes because hinge can suddenly form somewhere in the middle of the, of the column or so, but we, we, we normally exclude because those are uh, exclude such cases because they are typically uh, of uh, low probability. So there will be a number of, uh, of possible failure modes for the system. I will denote it by capital F. Uh, this is event occurrence of an if failure mode. So for this frame, we will have so-called beam mode, so-called sway mode, and uh, so-called uh, combined mode where the structure folds itself. Because plastic hinges, let's assume it's a, say, a steel structure, right? Which is properly designed, so it's ductile and so on. Uh, so uh, those modes will, uh, will happen when plastic hinges uh, 
sufficiently large plastic hinges uh, to overcome redundancy in the system will form. And I will call small f even local failure of uh, jth member or cross section. Right? So here you have, for example, uh, F1 would be plastic hinge form here in this corner, another F small f, F2 plastic hinge form in another corner, and say F3 plastic hinge form in the middle of the beam, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, probability of system failure as such is, uh, uh, is the union of probabilities of, of uh, all the relevant failure modes, right? So in this case, right, so in this case it would be a function of probability of this mode and this mode and this mode. And I was trying already to explain and highlight because these are known facts. Uh, probability on the other hand of each of the failure modes, each failure mode will depend where at the same time most local failures, in this case uh, plastic hinge formation occur. So they have to happen at the same time. So uh, wh wh what would be my approach from, from how, we s how we normally conceptualize, I think uh, that, that that's how we do uh, uh, failure, is to use structural health monitoring or damage detection schemes to update those probabilities of local failure. And use quite obviously to, 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 uh, to return approach to, to um, uh, to, to the damage detection, right? First, first point, damage detection as such, then localization, and then some form of severity assessment at level three. So, well, I interpret the severity assessment as updating, uh, as finding local, local, uh, localizing damage and finding what is the extent in terms of uh, in terms of probability. So, data from monitoring systems can be used to update probabilities of local member cross section failures here, p of small. FJ. Subsequently, these local failures probabilities can be used to update system failure mode, mode probabilities and then overall system failure probabilities. So from here, obviously, we can find update PFA. Well, it's difficult and straightforward. That's, that's another story, right? Because there's, uh, both events are quite often non exclusive and so on and so forth. So uh, there might be challenges there. And from those, we are able to find probability of failure. Otherwise, and I'm, I'm approaching it from the point of view of quantifying the value of, uh, FSH, uh, of uh, SHM in, say, pre-posterior analysis. Otherwise, how are you going to, uh, to uh, quantify this value of uh, information from SHM if you don't know the probabilities of failure? Well, consequences modeling is another, another challenge, but it's sort of uh, another thing. So, subsequently, those local probabilities can be find to, uh, to uh, can be uh, can be used to update probabilities of uh, um, mode, modes of failure and then overall system failure. Consequences cost can be assigned as a separate task to failures to calculate overall risk, including cost of monitoring, using, for example, pre posterior analysis, and then risk can be minimized via optimal sensor placement and or that's about uh, the presentation is about uh, optimizing uh, sensor placement, but obviously a very similar approach can be used to opti for optimal scheduling of uh, monitoring, uh, even choice of monitoring system to use, and even uh, the algorithm you process your uh, your data with. And of course, all of those optimization problems may increase the complexity, but can be can be treated together. <coughs> So how would, it, uh, would such an optimization of system look, look like? So let's say we have, a, we have a truss, perhaps a bridge, and so on. In this case, this is not a redundant structure. So it's really a, a parallel system, sorry, serious system, but that's perhaps uh, not that important. You can think of placing different types of sensors in different places. Not of them are shown, right? And sort of suggested that this is perhaps an accelerometer, this is strain gauge, and so on and so forth. Of course, sensors can be placed in many other places. They can be placed even outside the structure, for example, to measure ground motion, or you have a wind system here on the approach to the, if it's a bridge, and so on and so forth. And it will be technically, of all the possible, uh, possible uh, locations of sensors, you can describe the topology by, uh, by such uh, vector, which will have binary vector, which will have one if you do place sensor in your chosen location and zero if you don't. 
You monitor the, you collect the data from the sensors, multiple sensor systems, those could be strength accelerations and so on and so forth, many other other uh, signals can be connect, collected, uh, some signals about environmental conditions like temperature will likely be necessary and so on. So these are the uh, time series from individual sensors, they will form a vector m of, of t. You hardly use really, of course, uh, data as such, uh, you extract features, maximum strengths, perhaps natural frequencies, perhaps some other features, so this is Rn. Right. And again, this is about linking really, really, uh, really what you get from your monitoring system to uh, to failure of uh, of your system. I think that those features there is there is need for for additional map, mapping. It's, it's always done from features to some other parameters which relate to failure. The only point is here that. Uh, I think the critical link is that it will enable the term, that, that those uh, parameters which you extract from measurements, uh, they have to enable determination of reliability with respect to the failure modes which we previously, which I previously, uh, previously shown. Now, certain things do not really relate that well, right? Failure modes are typically being described by in traditional engineering mechanics uh, by strengths, stresses, and their resultants, perhaps moments, perhaps uh, axial forces, and so on and so forth. Right? I think there is a challenge because we, the features or even parameters which we try to assess damage, locate damage, and, and, um, and um, detect it as such are not often suitable or immediately suitable to to go to failure modes and have probability span of, uh, of uh, failures. So critical but challenging and current, currently I think underdeveloped linked. Obviously, well as I already emphasized, uh, if you want to use your system to provide complete information of what you are doing, you need uh, damage localization and severity assessment from your system. Unless uh, might be a viable strategy in some cases, you just want to detect damage and then send people in with some NDT or just visual inspection. So I think if it's going to be a full solution, uh, clearly your system has to go beyond just damage detection, has to local localize damage and assess severity. Uh, in pre posterior analysis, we will need uh, uh, probabilities uh, and some modeling of damage detection method performance. Uh, for individual members or cross sections to find those uh, those uh, probabilities, right? So what I sketch here is the say so here I have on the horizontal axis uh, dm the measured parameters which uh, relate well hopefully well to uh, to the to to uh, damage probability to, to failure probabilities and here I have the actual values of uh, of those parameters which, which happen in the structure. For example, log that and so on, and there is a joint probability distribution function here sketched this way. Uh, conditional probabilities of uh, our parameters, uh, our, our measured parameters, uh, conditional on the actual parameters having certain value, will look as follows. And this is what you can establish in the lab or through, through a study. Right? You can, you can, uh, you can. Uh, test your method uh, in this way. But we would like to have uh, this method, if it's going to work well, you have to has, it has to be accurate, that means mean value of the parameters that you, that you measure or establish from measurement will have to be same as, uh, as the actual parameters and small standard deviations. So perhaps this distribution is not really that, uh, that small, right? But this will give you a precision. Uh, if you set up threshold for TM, so certain threshold for the values of, uh, uh, of measured parameters and threshold TA for the actual values, everything above that is actual occurrence of damage, right? So for example, stresses exceeded uh, yield strength or something like that. Now here are the values of measured strengths. Typically you don't want in damage detection, you don't want to detect damage, you want to detect the fact that the system is tending towards damage. Right? So the threshold for detection will have to be smaller 
than the actual, and it's shown here, than the actual threshold for, uh, for those parameters together. Now, by, by integrating this uh, probability distribution function, which might be a challenge because it's a 2D case, but, uh, but typically you will have a vector of parameters in a structure. So, by integrating those probabilities on, in all those four regions, right, defined by the TN and TA threshold, you will get probabilities of two positives in your detection false negatives, two negatives, and uh, um, false positives, which you need for, for, um, for uh, pre-posterior analysis later. So after that, decision tree can be, can be considered with, uh, with, uh, for the pre-posterior analysis. You will have no monitoring case. It's already shown several times in this, uh, in this, even in this morning, right? And you will have uh, um, another decision tree for uh, if monitoring system, configuration of an if monitoring system described by this, this vector which shows you the position. Michael had a nice kind of stack of those, uh, those uh, decision trees related to different uh, systems and so on. So imagine that there is another decision tree like that for, uh, for another configuration of a system and so on and so forth. And then out of all those you can find one that will minimize your uh, your uh, overall cost or overall least cost building re uh, remarks. So a framework for optimizing sensing system topologies for maximizing value of information has been outlined for assessment of structural condition or managing risk of failure based on minimizing the failure risk against the cost of uh, data collection. Basic premise is to use measurements to create features that map into parameters that relate to local member or cross-section failures. Uh, for example, formation of plastic hinges, because that would be the synthesis of the probabilities of failure. Right? In, in the traditional, I don't know, there might be other ways of, of approaching it, but in the traditional structural engineering or reliability engineering, uh, structural reliability engineering context and uh, framework. These parameters from measurements may be used to update local members' cross section failure probabilities, system failure mode probabilities, and finally, total system failure probabilities. Uh, assigning co consequences or costs to failures and using pre-posterior analysis enables to calculate the risk uh, reductions associated with each candidate sensing uh, topology or perhaps cost increases and choosing the topology that is optimal in this uh, sense. There are of course a number of challenges, I haven't done any numbers and so on, it's just as I said a framework, a preliminary framework. Challenges for application to real complex structural systems will include Determination of all relevant failure mechanisms and associated probabilities, right? So this is really that, that picture here, right? For, this is a simple structure. It's not, not so much about SHM, it's a well-known challenge in failure analysis as such. So the only thing is that uh, here in this framework, on top of this challenge, you, you, you will have some other challenges. Uh, constructing features from measured signals that correlate well with reaching maximum capacity in crucial members cross section. This is core SHM or damage detection uh, activity, core challenge, and so on. Challenge that has, I think, not yet been definitely not cracked down or anything like that. So this is a challenge. I think that uh, again, I have no, 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 so much practice uh, or experience with that. I think then optimization problem itself might be very challenging. Right? So efficient computation algorithm for solving the optimization problem uh, are useful. Well, as always, we have to be pragmatic. Here we have to be pragmatic and here we have to be pragmatic and just get rid of uh, cases which are hopeless, which either have, well, are not going to be optimized, it's obvious from the first insight, or um, probably failure modes which are highly unlikely and so on and somehow, somehow uh, somehow start with a uh, smaller pot of uh, possible solutions. All right, so that's it. I would ju just like to thank Lloyd's Register Foundation, who kind of support financially the operations of our safety and reliability center at Aberdeen. And last but not least, 30 seconds of your time, uh, I have, I believe, emailed most of you for, of whom I had uh, email addresses. Uh, Alvaro Cunha and myself are organizing uh, a mini symposium on structural health monitoring at Eurodyne conference next year, Rome, September. Abstracts are due uh, September 12 this year. 
right? I have received already some, some abstracts, so fa thank you very much. I would like to warmly encourage you to, uh, to, to submit more abstracts. Um, now, Alvaro, who ran the, the, the whole uh, conference in Porto uh, two years ago, the conference occurs every three years, told me that uh, there was an SHM uh, symposium, just email if you want, uh, if you need any information, or you can just Google it very easily, told me that uh, SHM strength uh, two years ago in Tokyo was really a conference, sorry, in Porto, was uh, really a, a conference within a conference with 150 papers. Which brings me to the topic I, I, I noticed that, um, that Sebastian is targeting the Stanford workshop. Uh, Stanford workshop has dates has recently been uh, announced. They overlap. But this is in Europe, right? And it's about SHM and so on. So I think the choice is obvious. Thank you very much. Yeah.